Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here on this very, very important day. On a night that we commemorate, commemorate a tragedy, but we're not here to mourn. Because if you ask Brother Malcolm, would you like these people to mourn your passing? And I think it would be unanimous that we all believe that he would say, oh no, just keep doing it. Just keep working hard to fight oppression. Because that's what he was all about. He wasn't interested in civil rights, he was interested in human rights. Right. And so many people before me had come up here and they said, this place has been transformed from a place of tragedy and sorrow to a place of hope and conversation about the things that mattered to him the most. I take tremendous pride in being on this board of directors where we've had such incredible, incredible events. And I have this crazy imagination sometimes where I look over to the side and there's nothing there but I see him. And he's leaning against the wall with a big old smile. And he's saying, I like this. This is the way it should be. This beautiful diversity getting together to talk about the things that matter in this world. Like the time we had the Classical Theater of Harlem build out a stage in here and do a play about the Nat Turner Rebellion called Emancipation. Yes, sir. About the time we honor our Latino neighbors by having an exhibition here for months called Latinos in the Heights and Their Roots, right. right? He understood that we had to create coalitions, black and brown coalitions, and everybody who would join it to make sure that strength was in unity, and in unity there would be victory over oppression. These are the things that Malcolm X felt so strongly about. And then his wonderful wife, a champion of education, Dr. Betty Shabazz, who wouldn't give up, who wouldn't say, we're going to leave that building destitute and the history that left there forgotten. And she wanted to make sure that no one ever forgot. Right. And so she came back here and made sure that we worked together to ensure that the legacy that he had created and that after her passing, the legacy that she had created. Because right. you remember, a marriage is a partnership. He couldn't have went out and hunted and collected if someone wasn't holding down the fort. It's a partnership. It's a 50-50 partnership. And so she, a very, if you ever met her, a very soft and compassionate woman, but she was strong and proud and she had a look sometimes that would look through your soul. Malak, you know that one, right? <laughs> you also know that one, right? Uh, well, I'll tell you this funny story that I told Dr. Ramadan last year. I said the first time I ever met Dr. Betty Shabazz, she had done to me what she does to everybody, sizes you up, and she said, who may you be? And I said, my name is Ziad Ramadan. And she immediately melted. And she looked at me a little harder. And she said, are you the son of Saeed Ramadan? And I said, uh, the Egyptian dude from Switzerland. Oh, nah, I'm a Palestinian from New York. <laughs> and, she, uh, <laughs> and, and so the person that she was talking about happened to be this gentleman right here, Professor Tarek Ramadan. <laughs> So she hardened up real fast again. <laughs> um, Professor Tarek Ramadan once told me that he sat on the lap of Malcolm X while he was writing some of the famous letters back to his wife because his family had helped facilitate his Hajj to Mecca and Dr. Betty's. And so I can tell you when I saw her melt that way, she had a profound love for the Ramadan family. And I felt that and I never forgot that. And so I really take tremendous pleasure 
in introducing you, Professor Tariq Ramadan, let me read you his bio, and I'm not, look, look what I did, I folded half of it because we can go on forever, but we'd rather get to the, we'd rather get to the speaker. But let me introduce you, Hillary and, uh, and Barack Obama took him off the no-fly list, and the University of Notre Dame sued the State Department. Yeah, because they, 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 they said that's a, you know, this is freedom of, uh, freedom of speech, freedom of expression. Now, how could you keep someone? The reason why is because he was anti-war. He was anti-war. Eventually, they really have a powerful person here who can speak against the oppression. The last comment I'm going to make about him is that I don't know whether sitting on the lap of Malcolm X or just having a tremendous amount of love for him. One thing that I that I see, I notice they both have in common, and many of us as well. And he uses this word a lot. He tries to shed light on the darkness of misinformation, of propaganda, and naivete. And, and he tries to use words that shed truth on oppression. Professor Tariq Ramadan.